All right. That song said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want to assure you right now that the Spirit of the Lord is in this house, and there is freedom. You need to know that. I'm going to start with prayer. Let's go, because I need to pray. <laughs> All right. Lord, I come to you as humbly as I know how. Lord, I ask that you would bless this word as it goes forth. Lord, I let, let every word out of my mouth be pleasure to your ears. Lord, I yield myself to you that you can have reign in this place. Lord, I ask every heart be open and ready to receive what the Lord, of the, what the, what the Lord has for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So tonight we are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. If I huff and puff, it's going to get better. Just hang on. Okay. So, and we say the initial evidence of speaking in tongues because in the Bible you will see as people who started getting filled with the Spirit, they began to speak in tongues. I want to assure you and I want to tell you that the real evidence, if you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, you will see a noticeable change in your life Amen. and you will start to operate in the supernatural. Yes. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the Spirit. Okay. There's two promises that I want to look at as we get started. The first one is John 3.16 and the second one is going to be Luke 3.16. Let's go to John 3.16 first. Everybody knows this one. For John so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is salvation. This is your promise of salvation. This promise is for you. This promise is for the other side. This promise is for when we get to heaven. This is your eternal life. This is your salvation. If you were here on Sunday, Pastor Matt preached being born again and the power that comes when you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to touch on it just a bit. Okay. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart. The Holy Spirit comes into you and lives. At this point, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen. At this point, there is a transaction that happens where Jesus takes your sin upon him, and in, in turn, he imputes to you righteousness. Amen. At this time, you are free from sin. You have victory over sin. You have victory over death. The sanctification process starts to happen. He also touched on the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit, you start to see the fruit of the Spirit. Um, I'm not, he picked four of them, I'm not sure, but love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, and faithfulness. You're going to see all of this. Now, I need you to know, at this point, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you something. All right, go to Luke. 316. Here we go. Look, I have a lot of scripture and she has it all back there, so she's ready for me whenever we go. So if you get lost, it's gonna be on the screen. Amen. Okay. Luke 316. John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you in water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. This is our promise for this side of eternity. This is our promise. This is a promise or a gift from God for this side of eternity. You get sealed at salvation with the Holy Spirit. You get filled with the, I'm going to explain this because I got revelation on it. It's coming. But you get filled with the Spirit at the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. It comes with surrender. Come on. Yes. You must surrender to Jesus to be eligible for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. This is what verbiage sounds like from people 
Right before they get baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, it sounds like this. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I can't do it on my own. Lord, send me. Lord, use me. Lord, I need you. This is what it sounds like right before you get baptized with the Holy Praise Spirit God. and fire. Okay. Good deal. The greatest gift to the world was salvation. The greatest gift to the church was the baptism of the Holy yeah. Spirit Amen. and fire. Yes. This, this, this scripture has been, passed, has been preached for the last three weeks. Blessed, y'all remember it? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, which is who? Jesus, for they will be filled. Amen. This is what they're talking about. This is what they're talking about. Those who hunger and thirst. When you hunger and you thirst for Jesus, you're going to be filled. Amen. Praise God. People are not, but some people are not going to like this message that I'm going to preach. Because some people don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people don't believe in speaking in tongues. Some people don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And it's okay because it is not a salvation issue. What I'm talking about tonight is after you've been saved. You're already saved. You're already on your way to heaven. It's done. I'm talking about what comes after salvation. Some people stop at salvation. Everything I'm going to talk to y'all tonight, I'm going to show you in scripture. And that's why I have so much scripture. Because I need you to see what I saw. Um, all right. What is this baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire? I need to tell you that on Monday, as I was working on this, this message, on Monday evening, I began to get confused. I was confused in my own self. I was overthinking it. And I was getting confused in my mind about this power. Because I know that I know that I know when you receive the Holy Spirit at salvation and you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you have the whole Holy Spirit. There's no junior Holy Spirit. There's no piece of a Holy Spirit. You have the entire Holy Spirit in you. Amen. I need to tell you this. The Holy Spirit can only work with what you give him. That's right. Some people want to give him the stuff they don't really care about. That's okay. He can have that. But he can't have those things that they really like. Those worldly, fleshly things that they refuse to get rid of. He can't work with that. Okay. Back to this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, oh, wait. Back to my confusion. Okay, so now I'm confused. I step back from the message. I knew I had to step back from the message. So, before I went to bed, I prayed for the Lord to give me some sweet sleep because I hadn't slept since he asked me to preach this. <laughs> so, I hadn't slept, and then I asked him to give me clarity. I needed clarity. I need to know what this fire he was talking about was, and what is this power from heaven that we receive? Because we've already got the power of the Holy Spirit. He's indwelling in us. And I woke up. Tuesday morning, I woke up. I slept all night. It was a good night's sleep. And the Lord gave me clarity. He gave me a revelation of what this is. And I'm going to give it to you. And whether you accept it or not, it's okay. Again, this is not a salvation issue, but I know that I know that I know what the Lord showed me. Okay, when we get baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire, what is it to get baptized? You get immersed or you get covered? At this point, he's going to cover you. He's going to come in very powerfully. You will be meeting Jesus at this time. It is an encounter with the Lord. Amen. He's going to encounter you at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You will feel the manifested presence of the Lord come upon you. 
He's going to rise up in you. He's going to come upon you, and he's going to begin to fill you. And as he fills you, out of your mouth will come tongues, which is a gift of the Spirit. Amen. His power is coming out of you from his manifested power that happened when you were baptized. You will only be baptized in the Holy Spirit one time. It's a one-time experience that you can put your finger on it. When you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will know that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're going to know the event. You're going to know when it happened, what happened that day. You're going to know it. You might not know the time and day, but you're going to know when it happened. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire on June 28, 2021 at approximately 6.45 in the morning. I remember it like it was this morning. You're going to know when it happens. Okay. What is this fire? It is a refiner's fire. When that fire comes upon you, it burns off the chaff. It burns off those impurities. It's, it just burns it off right there. That's why you feel so different right after. It burns it off. It's a purifying fire. And then you have that, that, um, that manifested power that comes upon you and shakes. So even though you have one baptism of the Holy Spirit, you continue to get filled with the Spirit. This is what he showed me. So in, I, with Moses, with the burning bush, the fire was the manifested presence of the Lord. Yes. With the cloud by day, fire by night, the fire was the manifested presence of the Lord. In the upper room, when the tongues of fire was upon their head, it was the manifested presence of the Lord. They began to get filled up and his power came out. That is what it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. It is to prepare you for the ministry. It is pre to prepare you to start doing what the Lord has called you to do. I need you to know every person in here has a ministry. You may not be, be behind a pulpit. You may not have a mic. But you have a ministry. The Lord has called you to do something for the kingdom of God. Okay. I want to show you something. <laughs> So you can be filled over and over and over again. And when will he fill you? He's going to fill you when he needs you to do something for him. Hallelujah. If you've ever spoken in tongues and interpretation, if you've ever had any of the gifts manifested, um, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, preaching the gospel, the boldness that it takes to preach the gospel. I need you to know that that is the manifested power of the Holy Ghost. It fills you up, and then it's his power, and it comes through you, and you give that word of knowledge, or you give that word of wisdom, or you sit up there and you preach with boldness, or you lay your hands on somebody, and they get healed. That is what we're talking about. That is the power that is coming from heaven when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit yes. and fire. Praise God. So I do, I want to show you all kind of the difference in Scripture with being sealed with the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go to Scripture. All right. Whew. John 20, verse 19 to 22. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. First point I want y'all to notice is where are the disciples and Peter at this point in time? They are in a room and they are hiding from the Jews. Actually, in another verse or version, it said they were terrified and they were hiding from the Jews. 
Second thing we need to notice, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I need you to know this as well. This came after the cross. Amen. Jesus preached this after his resurrection. Jesus thought this was important enough to preach after the resurrection, right before he ascended to heaven. This is what he chose to preach. Baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire and the Great Commission and the work of the ministry. And he also restored Peter. But this is what he, what he chose to preach. Okay? All right. So now, right now, I need you to look. When Jesus breathed on him, he had already died and been resurrected. So the Holy Spirit was available for him to <clears throat> breathe on him. And them to be sealed Amen. with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They confess with their mouth. They believe with their heart. They are saved. Praise God. They're saved. They now have the Holy Spirit and dwell in them and living in them. Come on. Okay. Let's go down. Let's go to Acts 1, 4 through 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Let me read that again. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. One more time for the people in the back. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. This was not him making a suggestion. He commanded them to wait for this baptism. Oh, I didn't get there yet. What did he command them to wait for? Let's see. Right. He said, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized you in water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. I want you to notice, if you missed it, in verse number four, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. They're waiting on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. They are already saved. They are already sealed with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Jesus knew that they could not do the work of the ministry without the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. How did Jesus know this? Because Jesus knows everything. That's not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> Jesus knows this because Jesus did not start his ministry until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. If Jesus had to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, and the disciples had to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, do you think maybe it's important that we kind of seek this baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire? Especially if we want to do ministry. Especially if you want, because the Lord has a ministry for you. The Lord has a, he has so much for you to do on this side of of earth and no I'm not preaching a works based gospel I'm telling you there's some things for us to do Woo! I'm excited about that I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay calm okay stay in Acts I'm gonna I'm gonna read this scripture but you stay in Acts because I'm coming back Luke 24 to 49 it says behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. This is the power that we're talking about. It's that dunamis power, that miracle working power, and it is a power to shoot you into your destiny of what the Lord has called you to do and to do the work of the ministry. Yes, yes. Praise God. Okay, let's look at Acts number 8, 5 to 8, another sealed, filled kind of example I just want to show you. Acts number 8, 5 to 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. He preached Christ to them, and the multitude, with one accord, heeded the things that Philip 
he did the things spoken by Philip. Hearing and seeing the miracles that he did for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. Go down to verse 12. But when Peter, but when they believed Peter, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. I need you to know right now, they have confessed with their mouth. They have believed in their heart. They even got baptized in water. These people are sealed and saved, according to Romans. These people are sealed and saved with the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. I'm going to add another one, please. All right, so go down to verse 14. This is verse, they already sealed, they're saved. What I'm talking about tonight has nothing to do with salvation. It comes after salvation, and you need to know this. This is for you to start operating in the ministry. Amen. Or do what the Lord has called you to do. I want to make that perfectly clear. You're already saved. That already happened. This comes after. There's more. After salvation, there is more. Okay. Verse number 14. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who... When they had come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. These people are already saved. For as of yet, he had not fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone whom I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perished with you because you thought, listen, you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have ne neither part nor portion in this matter. Here you go. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of your wickedness and pray God if, he, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned with bitterness and bound in iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me. None of these things which you have spoken, that none of these things that you have spoken may come upon me. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in, all, in many villages of the Samaritans. On verse 16, if you can go back to 16, I'm just going to show you what he says, that he had not fallen upon any of them yet. The infilling, that dunamis power, that power to get them pushed into their ministry hadn't fallen on them yet until the apostles laid their hands. They were saved. They had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit living in them. I need y'all to look at Simon real quick. Simon was the sorcerer before. However, the scripture says that he believed as well. He believed that he was baptized. Okay? I want to let you know that as they laid hands for the, for the people to receive the Holy Spirit, Simon the sorcerer was not eligible for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire because his heart was not right. He had no hunger and thirst for righteousness or for Jesus. He may have been saved. I'm not really sure. He confessed with his mouth and he believed in his heart. Maybe he was just going through the sanctification process. Maybe he's just a lukewarm Christian. I'm not really sure. That ain't the point. The point is, he was not surrendered. So he didn't qualify for this baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. You need to know it's for the work of the ministry. The Lord needs to know that he can trust you with his people. He needs to know and he's gonna know that when you say, Lord, 
It's just you. I lay it all down for you. You have it all. Take it all, Lord. Everything I have is yours. I give it to you. That's when he's going to know. Praise God. There is something that happens with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your spiritual eyes are open. Your spiritual ears are open. You start to love what Jesus loves, and you start to hate what Jesus hates. Come on. There is something that happens. Before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you love Jesus. I love Jesus with all my heart. But something happened. When that fire came and I met Jesus, I had an encounter with Jesus, Amen. the Spirit of God. Something changed. I fell madly in love with Jesus. He is the only thing I think Amen. of in the morning, at lunchtime, and before I go to bed. That's it. Hallelujah. If we're not talking about Jesus, what are we talking about? What are we really doing here? Come on. There is a love. Even in a conversation, you can start talking to people, and if, if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, I guarantee you that that message is coming right back to Jesus. It can go wherever it wants to go, but it's going to circle around, and it will be back on Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Whew. When I got filled with the Holy Ghost, this is what he talked about, experiential knowledge. I can only tell you what I experienced. I don't know what y'all experienced. <laughs> this is that refiner's fire that I'm talking about. When it happened, the fear of man was gone. Mm. Okay. The fear of death was gone. At that point, I knew that I knew that I knew that I was saved. I knew it because it wasn't... It was a, he showed me that he threw all of my sin. He took it. And not only was it forgiven, it went into the sea of forgetfulness. I was washed white as snow by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I knew it without a doubt. Amen. That is the power that comes. It's that power. It's meeting Jesus. It's that feeling that filling up in your inside and flowing out in the power of God. Let me tell you something right now. If you don't believe what I'm saying, I guarantee you right now, the manifested power of the Lord is upon me. And the only reason that you are hearing my voice right now is because he's flowing out of me. Hallelujah. This ain't me. <laughs> I wasn't planning on preaching. Even on Wednesday, when he told me I was going to preach, I told him no. Told him he was crazy and I lost his mind. But I had to pray about it. And here I am. But that's what it is. This is this is the boldness that comes Thank you, Jesus. from the manifested present of the Holy Ghost once you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. All right, I know. Here we go. I got some powers. I got four powers. I started with five. I went to four. I'm probably only going to make it to three or maybe two. But here we go. The first one is the power to, to the power and the boldness to preach the gospel. Amen. Matthew 3, 11 through 17. Again, we hear it again. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire, his winnowing fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean, clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with that unquenchable fire. Verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Then John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill our righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I need you to look at verse 16. He saw the spirit of the God. He saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. 
The dove is the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus, filling him up so he can flow him out. He can flow out of him for him to do his ministry. Okay. Somebody had something else right there. Hallelujah. I do. So right here. Um, so Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit in front. So Luke 4, 1, 2. 1 and 2. It says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Anybody think Jesus might have had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. <laughs> he was. He was. He was. Okay. So Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, he returned to the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when he had ended, he was hungry. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Anybody who fasts know that if you're going to do a 40-day fast, it better be the power of the Holy Spirit. And also, he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. This power that we're talking about is going to help you not to be tempted by the devil. I have a disclaimer. If Jesus was sent into the wilderness to be prepared before his ministry, when you get filled with the baptism and the Holy Spirit and fire, you may go through a season of wilderness. Jesus needs to teach you some things. He needs to show you what he wants you to do. He needs to speak to you, and he needs to teach you. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's going to teach us yes, some yes. things. Amen. So just don't, just, accept, just embrace it. Embrace it, embrace it, embrace it. Okay. Mark 16, 14 to 18. This is still Jesus. All right. Later he appeared to the, the 11 as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and their hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Go to Acts 2, 1 through 8. Okay. Here we go. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared them divided tongues as a fire, one sat upon each of them. As they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there was a dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews devout men from every nation under heaven. And when, they, when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and they were confused, because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Then they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Look, are not these all who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we are born? Go down to verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it, is only, since it is only the third day, the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood 
before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Drop down to 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. I want to remind you where Peter and the disciples were when Jesus breathed on them. They were hiding from the Jews in a room. They were terrified and full of fear of the Jews. That was before the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Now they are baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, and Peter begins to preach. He actually raised his voice, and he said, heed my words. I want you to know that from that day forward to the day he died, he preached Jesus. It is said that he was crucified upside down on the cross because he told them he was not worthy to be crucified as our Lord Jesus Christ was. So he was still speaking Jesus at his death. That is the power that we're talking about. It's the manifested power and presence of the Lord. Praise God. All right, Acts number four. Hmm. I'm about to get excited. Acts number four, verse 13. <laughs> this was like the best scripture I've seen in here. Y'all listen. So listen what it says. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, it probably pertains to me, that's why. The boldness of Peter and John and they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Do people know that you've been with Jesus? Praise Can God. they recognize that you've been with Jesus? I pray as I pray this message, I pray that you know that I spent a little bit of time with Jesus. No, a lot of time with Jesus. I pray as you go out and you minister and you talk to people, they know that you spent some time with Jesus. Yes. Well, Lily, how would they know that I spent time with Jesus? The fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Wait, well, how do you walk? How do you talk? How do you treat people? Yeah. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness. How are you walking? We as Christians need to look different than the world. Yes. Do you know what a compliment that is? Our pastor preached on Sunday, and she told us a story where somebody came up to her, and they just told her, something's different about you. Praise God. She was looking at flowers. Something's different about you. I want people to say something's different about you. Have you been with Jesus? Oh, praise God. Amen. Whew. All right, drop, drop down to uh, verse 29. Thank you, Lord. So what happens here? They, they're in trouble because they keep preaching Jesus. Um, they told them to stop. They couldn't actually put them in jail because they didn't do nothing wrong. Um, so they tell him to stop, and he says, are we going to listen to men, or are we going to listen to God? So they get into a room, and they start to pray. They're going into prayer. Verse 29. Acts 4, verse 29. Okay. Whew. He says, now, Lord, look, he's praying. Now, Lord, look at their threats, and grant your servants that with a boat. All right. I didn't do that on purpose. All right. Now, look. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness that they that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and signs and wonders, and that signs and wonders may be done through your name through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak the word of God with boldness. It's that manifested presence. It comes upon you, it fills you up, and it flows out of you. Whether it be a tongue and interpretation, whether it be a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, anything. Whether it be your hands being laid on somebody, it is the power of the Lord that is flowing through you. 
Amen. That is the power we're talking about. Okay. Anybody who's had a tongue and interpretation or anything, you know what I'm talking about. As soon as it comes, as soon as it starts to come, your heart starts to pump it. Your heart's pumping, your belly starts pumping, and you can feel it rising up. You know the presence of the Lord is upon you. And then there's nothing you can do but let it out. And it flows out. And he gives a word to the church. You need to know that the gifts of the Spirit are to edify the body. It is to lift up, it is to encourage, and it is to edify the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're only on power number two. <laughs> Praise God. I think I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to jump down. All right, so I have four powers. So power number three. The power to cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. I need you to know my experience, and that's what I'm going to talk about. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit and fire, I had never seen it before. I was a... Catholic growing up, I probably went 25 years without church, no church, zero church. Then I was in church, a Pentecostal church, for about seven years. In this church, I'm not talking bad about it, then I'm telling you my experience and what I saw. Um, we may have seen tongues and interpretation maybe three or four times in the seven years. People did pray in the spirit, probably four or five of them, probably out of about 80 people. Um, I've never seen a manifested healing or the power of the Lord coming upon somebody, them laying hands, and them actually getting healed right there. I didn't witness that in that church. And it's not a, it's not a big deal. I just didn't see it. I didn't know what it was. And then I definitely didn't know about demon spirits. Nobody talked about that. So when I get filled, I am, <laughs> he comes upon me. He fills me up, tongues start flowing out, and then a couple weeks later, I didn't sleep for probably three weeks, but after that, I didn't know what to do. Nobody around me knew how to explain what had happened to me, and I didn't know how to explain what had happened to me. All I knew is that the Lord had touched me and something was going on. Even when I would talk to people, I felt like nobody understood me and I was going crazy. Even a lot of people told me I was crazy. Okay? And that's okay too. But not looking back on it now, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back on it now, I know that it was what I needed. The Lord didn't want me around people. It was a wilderness season. He drew me back. It was me and the Lord, one-on-one, -on -one, just us. Every morning, and I would get a, I start, the Lord was speaking to me Every day I was getting something from the Lord. And I was telling people, but they thought I was crazy. A lot, of, a lot of people said a lot of things. And it was people that I loved. And it was people that I trusted. And it was people that should have had my best interest at heart. It was people who should have grabbed on to me. But I needed to go through that. I needed to go through that because the Lord wanted to show me some things. And he had to separate me because he didn't want the opinions of men to mess up what he was trying to do. What I did was I got my word. What happened was I believed it. I believed every word of the Bible. Every place he took me to, everything I read, I just believed it. When he said you can cast out demons, I said, all right, let's go. When he said you can heal the sick, I said, all right, let's go. Whatever he said, he says we can raise the dead. Just ain't nobody drop dead yet in front of me. But I plan on praying for him. I just believed it was that simple. I was so simple-minded, uneducated, and untrained that I just believed what he said was true. Hallelujah. Praise God. I ended up at the Stevensville Market. Oh, help me, Lord. I ended up at the Stevensville Market with a sign that said, if you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. And guess what? People came. People came. We prayed. They got healed right in front of us. That nobody can tell me that, they can't, that the power's not real. You can't tell me that the power's not real. I seen it. I, I seen the power of the Lord come upon me, flow through me, and work 
and heal his body, his people. Praise God. I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it. We can, I'm sitting somewhere. I, we're praying. It might have been in a church. It might have not. We're praying, and, and I'm just praying, Holy Spirit, touch them, and they growl at me. I didn't say, oh, I said, come out in the name of Jesus. He said, we can cast out demons. And it came out. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's some good stuff. It's only because I believe what the word said. He said it, and I was going to do it. Yes. Oh. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's get to some scripture now. As we read these scriptures, I need you to know every word of it, I believe it. I was just crazy enough to believe it. Okay. Let's go to some scripture. John 14, 12 to 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I believe this. I also believe whatever you ask, it's going to glorify Jesus. Amen. You need to know that. Don't go asking for no crazy stuff. Praise God. Yeah. All right. Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then he called the twelve disciples together, and he gave them power and authority over all demons. To cure disease, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. I just believed it. He said I could do it. He said we can do it, so we can do it. All right, Luke 10, 19 to 20. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Praise God, our names are written in heaven. Praise God. One more point here. When you pray for people, do not be double-minded. You must pray, you must believe, and you must let the Holy Spirit's power flow through them and let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. He will do what he wants to do. All we have to do is believe and pray. Praise God. All right. I had that scripture. What you want me to do? I got a lot. Yeah, Let me, to... let's do this. I'm just going to, um, it's good. That's good. I had two more powers. The other power was the power of truth. You need to know, and have scripture for it, but y'all know this stuff. You need to know that he is the power of truth. The Holy Spirit is the power of truth. He will lead you into all truth. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think that's where I was at. Where? Yeah, that's it. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And his job, you need to know what the job of the Holy Spirit is. The job of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus, period. Amen. That's it. Amen. His job is to glorify Jesus and to glorify God. As we work for the kingdom of God, as we move in this power for the people, for the body of Christ, you need to know that Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus. If at any point in time, you begin to glorify something other than Jesus, whether it be man or it be self, Come on. you have the wrong spirit. Come on. I'm not going to say you have the wrong spirit. I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit is not operating through you. The Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus or to glorify God, and that is what he's going to do. He's not. He knows what he does. Amen. He knows his job, and he's very Amen. good at it. Praise God. Okay. The other prayer, the other power was the power of prayer. You have your prayer language. You need to use it. Our prayers are powerful. We're not praying to man. We're praying to God. In our weaknesses, the Holy Spirit knows what to pray. 
He is praying through us, and he's making intercession. If I were to pray for my son, I can only use so many words in English. However, if I bring him to the Lord in intercession, as I begin to pray for him, the Holy Spirit knows more what he needs than what I know that he needs. So the Holy Spirit can pray through us the perfect prayer. Okay, we're getting, we're almost done. Just hang on. Stick a little bit longer. Whew. Okay, if you want to make a difference in the world on this side, you need the power from heaven, from the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Yes. I need you to know that with power, there's a tremendous power that comes. With this power comes great responsibility. There is a responsibility. I encourage everyone, as you start to work in this, the Holy Spirit, as you start to work in the gifts of the Spirit, find you an accountability person. Find you somebody who can hold you accountable. This is important. This is important. This person should love you with everything that they have. They should speak life into you, they should encourage you, and they should give you direction. However, they will also correct you, rebuke you, and tell you when you're in error. Yes. When this happens, do not come up with a spirit of offense. You take it to the Lord. Because you know that when they rebuked you, it was for your best interest. These people who you would put on top of you to watch you can see things that you can't see. They, they may see your blind spot, wherever you're blind at. They may see you getting into some pride, and they can pull you back. They may see you getting into error, and they can pull you back. They may see you start to backslide, but they can pull you back before it's too late. You need to find somebody, a Christian person, somebody who can give you good biblical counsel that you can be accountable to as you start to walk in this. Yes. Okay. Whew, we are almost there. Y'all just hang in there. A little bit more. I need you to know that every experience is different. Every experience, your gifts are going to be different. Your born again experience is going to be different. Do not compare yourself to anybody else. Do not compare your gifts to anybody else. If you do, you're going to stir up some stuff you don't want to stir up. Jealousy, strife, envy. We don't want that. Come on. Do not compare yourself to anybody else. Our plumb line, y'all already know, is preached in here all the time, is Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Compare yourself to Jesus. Are you looking more like Jesus? Yes. Amen. Praise God. So we're almost done. Two things that I see that stop people from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. There's probably more, but these are the two things that I see. The first thing is they just don't want it. They don't understand it, and they don't want it, and that's fine. This is not a salvation issue. You will still make it to heaven without the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. But man, he commanded us to wait for it. Thank you, Jesus. He commanded us to wait for it. He wants us to have it. He waited till after he, he resurrected to preach it. Right before he left, I think it was important. Yeah. I know it's important. I know it's important for the last days. That's what I know. Yeah. I know that in the last days, it is dark. I know it's going to be witchcraft. You're going to have the witches and the warlocks against the people of God. Come and on. you better have some power to fight. Come on. You need the power to fight in the last days. You're going to need... You're going to need... The power to fast for 40 days, maybe. You might need that. Okay. Just saying. All right. And the second thing is unforgiveness. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. The Lord said he will not forgive you if you have unforgiveness in your heart. He can't. He can't. 
every time I did this message, every time I went over it, the Lord had me to pray for people at this point. But right now, because we're running out of time, I'm going to give you my last verse, but I am coming back around. I'm not going to leave here without praying for some people that have some unforgiveness in their heart. Last verse. Here we go. Luke 11, 9 to 13. The title of this passage is Keep Asking, Keep Seeking, Keep Knocking. Who can get this Holy Spirit and fire the baptism? Here we go. Verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and everyone who seeks finds. And him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, knowing how to give good gifts to your children, this is the part. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You just have to want it. You have to be surrendered. We talked about that. You got to hunger and thirst for righteousness, for Jesus, and you shall be filled. Okay, I'm coming back around. Stay in your seat. Don't go nowhere. Just receive what I'm about to pray. You need to know, I need to tell you this. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, listen, teens. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you need to know that it's not because, it's not to excuse the unexcusable. It's not to excuse what that person did to you. I know they hurt you. I know they hurt you. It was bad. I know they hurt you. Forgiveness is for us to protect our hearts yes. from being destroyed by the enemy. Yes. It is to protect your heart from getting bitterness all rooted up in there, from getting rejection and offense all up in there. So when you forgive somebody, it is to protect your heart. Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna pray over you real quick, and then we are. If anybody wants the baptism, or you know wants wants to receive the baptism, we'll pray for that. But right now, whew, Holy Spirit, yes. I ask you to touch your people right now, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Yes. Lord, I ask you if there's unforgiveness in their heart, I need you to search their hearts right now. If there's any unforgiveness in their heart, Lord, I pray that you would bring that name to their remembrance right now. If a name has popped into your head, the Lord needs you to deal with this person. If, the, if a name has popped into your head, you just need to give them to the Lord. Bring these people to the Lord. This is how it looks. Lord, I repent for any unforgiveness in my heart. I give you whoever the name is. Lord, give me the strength to forgive these people. Lord, I pray right now that you give these people the strength so they can have complete freedom in Jesus' name so that this unforgiveness will lift off for them in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you've done tonight, Lord, and I thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.